Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video we're going to talk about cybersecurity in Kubernetes and I'm going to show you how to restrict traffic within Kubernetes itself and both internal into the cluster and externally. A little bit like how we did in Proxmox when we set up an SDN, we can basically do the same thing by creating a software defined firewall rule inside Kubernetes. And it's really powerful. Not only does it handle things like the IP address and port, it'll also do protocol and really cool, it can actually just do the container name itself. So that's right, you could simply say, I don't want Pi-hole to talk to my proxy or whatever you can think of. And I don't know exactly how you've got your setup configured and I don't know what you necessarily want to be able to talk to one another. But what I will do is I'll show you all of the config that you need to deploy in order to create your wildest dreams. Now, thankfully, all we have to do is walk through a single YAML file and it's called a network policy. So let's hop into VS Code now and I'll show you what it looks like. Then I'll give you some examples of what it can actually do. But before we do that, I just wanted to show you the official documentation and I'll put a link in the description below so you can go and read that. But the documentation will give you everything you need to know much more concisely than I can. Essentially, what we're doing here is we're creating network policies. And as it says, it defines how pods or services can interact with one another. Now, the really cool thing is we can use things like namespaces. We can use things like side arrangers all the sort of bells and whistles that come with Kubernetes. And the great thing is we can do pod isolation and it even includes some common examples. So here we can see a network policy example and what this is doing is both for ingress and egress. So remember I just said this can be both for inbound traffic, traffic going into the cluster or to a pod or out from the pod to in the cluster or even externally. Now, if you have a look down on the right, there's some really handy ones. So things like default deny all ingress traffic. That might be quite useful if you just want to block any traffic to a pod. And maybe one good use case for this is in previous videos, I showed you how to restrict access to traffic. And in that example, it was Docker. We had to set up four ports. Now, we don't have to do that thanks to network policies. We can just have the standard traffic set up. And then you can deploy network policies, which unfortunately Docker doesn't have. And we can then restrict with a network policy. So we can use traffic for everything internally, but only certain services externally, which is awesome. You can also see things like default deny egress traffic. So perhaps there are containers on your network. I don't know, maybe something like Vault Warden. Probably isn't a great example, but if that pod, for example, were to be popped by an attack, maybe we want to block egress from that pod into other areas of the cluster or your network, thus trying to put a ring fence around that attack to minimize some of that propagation. Okay, so let's do a deep dive into what this actually looks like. Now, this isn't exhaustive. As per the documentation I just showed you on screen, I can't do everything in one config, but we'll walk through a couple of common examples. So here we see a YAML file. It's of the kind network policy, much like we have different kinds for services and ingresses, etc. The API version is set to networking.k8s, so it's part of the networking stack for k8s. And this one is just called allow internet only. Now, what do you think that might mean? Well, technically, this is restricting the egress, which we can see down here. So it's a policy type of egress. Now, importantly, you want to tie this to a namespace. So in this instance, I'm just going to restrict Pi-hole's access. And I'll demonstrate what this container can reach before we apply the network policy. And then I'll repeat that process with a different ping to see what it can reach afterwards. So without this rule, by default, all pods can talk to one another. There's no firewall rules in place. But after this, and let's have a quick look, we can see that there's egress to, and then 0.0.0, .0 so anywhere, so wait, except these here, which are the internal network IP ranges. So I'm saying, yeah, you can go anywhere, but you can't go here. So effectively, it's going anywhere on the internet. So once this is deployed, it can only connect to things outside of my network and we shouldn't be able to see connections ping into internal services. Now, I've also enabled an egress to this special thing here, the cube system for the cube DNS. 
Now, what that means is it can resolve DNS within the cluster, which is really useful so that it can do name resolution within the cluster. A bit like Docker does, where you can specify a container name, it's the same sort of thing for Kubernetes. So let's hop into Rancher now, and I'm going to dive into my PyHole container where this network policy isn't yet applied. And so here's my PyHole running in Kubernetes on K3S at the moment. And just behind my gorgeous face are the three dots. I'm going to click those and I'm going to go execute into the shell. Now we're in PyHole itself. So let's do a ping. I'm going to ping my other PyHole, which is set up as an LXC on Proxmox. I'll come on to that in another video. But if I ping that 192.168.8.2, not only is that on a different subnet, but when I hit return, it's now pinging it and we can see that traffic. So let's have a bit of fun. I'm going to head into the terminal now and apply the network policy I just showed you in VS Code. So now here is my admin machine for my K3S cluster and I've copied over the network policy here. Now over in the terminal, I've gone to this folder here and I'm going to do a kubectl apply dash f and then that network policy. And let's see what happens down here in the bottom left when I do that. So if we run that command, here we can see that it's still pinging. But if we go back into the terminal and we cancel that, and then if we do again the same command, we're not getting any data. I think that's just because previously it cached the rule and it almost needed to stop that command to pick up the new one. But now you can see that that ping is hanging and all of that traffic is blocked. But if we do a control C and we ping something like Cloudflare 1.1.1, we can see that we've got that egress rule working. So it can access anywhere, i.e. the internet, but it can't access my internal network. Now, you can think of millions of reasons why you might want to do this, i.e. something like a DMZ, for example. You get the idea. And so if we did want to restrict some traffic to a container, i.e. a bit like a firewall rule, so restricting access to certain pods from the internet maybe, I'm going to use a local example here just because it's easy and I don't have to fiddle around with any port forwards, but the process is exactly the same. So here I'm accessing that Pi hole that I just demonstrated in the previous section, but now I'm going to block my access. So I'm currently accessing this from the machine I'm recording on, and then I'm going to apply a network policy. I'll probably have to open up an incognito tab, but when I do, I'm hoping that that will block my access to this service. And then obviously you can just change the source network that I'm going to specify to whatever works for your setup. So then we'll have traffic restricted outbound from the pod and also traffic inbound to the pod. Okay, so running through this new rule, you can see that it's still applied to PyHole I should probably change this name. Restrict internal. And now it's going to apply to PyHole because it's in that namespace. It's going to apply to all pods within that namespace. That's probably something I should have mentioned last time. If you have multiple pods within the same namespace, you can choose exactly which pod it applies to, which is pretty awesome. Now, the policy type has changed from egress to ingress. And so for the ingress rule, we've changed it from to to from because we're not going to somewhere. We're having traffic come from somewhere. Now, basically what this is doing is it's saying traffic can come from anywhere, but it can't come from anywhere internal. So when I apply this, it would mean internet traffic could reach it, but my local network couldn't. Not probably the greatest example, you'd probably want to remove some of these and flip this around. So your internal network could reach it, but the internet couldn't. So you'd flip that except around. But I'm going to hop into the terminal now and I'm going to apply this rule. And so when we apply this rule, that's been created. Now I've had to actually load up Edge to do this because of some weird caching error. But now if I go to Edge, and I go to pihole.jimsgarage.co.uk, hit that refresh, I get the bad gateway. Now let's delete that rule. So let's delete the network policy. That's deleted. Let's hit the refresh. Hooray, we're back. So there you go. There's a really simple way 
to get full control over all of your pods and their access. So I hope you like that quick and dirty look at Kubernetes network policies. Now you should have all the tools you need to go and restrict your cluster down to anything you want. So you can have only the access to only the pods that you desire. Obviously, go and consult the documentation because there's a ton more under the hood that you can use to tweak this even further. I will start featuring some network policies in future Kubernetes videos, so at least now you've had a bit of a primer on that. And I'll give the two examples in my GitHub down below so you can go and use those as a base. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. If you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.